Alright, this is John Colo with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for him here in West Palm Beach, Florida. And I'm here with a share with you guys a crazy bearded man, <laughs> my friend actually, I've known for many years, who basically has a quarter acre lot and he has over a hundred fruit trees on it, including things like mangoes, sapote, and avocados, and all kinds of different fruits. His main claim to fame is that he plants trees super close. Ne normally you would never have over a hundred trees on a quarter of an acre, but that's like what his residential property is. So he's planting things super close and he has techniques to make it happen. And he's so finicky these days is he'll grow a tree for a couple years, he'll wait for it to fruit, he'll eat the fruit. If he doesn't like the fruit, he'll chop the tree down and he'll plant something better. And more recently, he's been actually just chopping down trees that he can't make a meal out of, right? So he doesn't want little berry things that, you know, make snacks. He wants to be able to harvest something substantial out of his yard to give him some calories to eat. So there are definitely pros and cons to that method, in my opinion, because really you're going to limit your diversity of foods if you believe that's important. Of course, if you don't believe that's important, then more power to you. Anyways, in this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to take you guys around his yard, show you guys some of the techniques and some of the trees that he's growing that's producing well for him here in the subtropics, and then we'll be interviewing him about why he decided to basically <laughs> plant over 100 fruit trees in his quarter acre residential lot. So uh, let's head across the street and show you guys the front yard. All right, so the first thing I want to show you guys is that Paul is from Brooklyn, right? <laughs> And being from Brooklyn, he's always aware of his surroundings, especially his trees in the front row surroundings because people that live in this area, if they see trees that have fruit that are ripe, they're gonna stop, pick it and eat it and take your fruit and then you won't even get to eat it. So he's had to be very strategic about what he plants in the front of his yard. So he's got a Moringa tree with the drumsticks. Most people aren't gonna stop and pick your Moringa leaves, which are amazing leaves that are anti-cancer great in juicing actually that's one of my top videos these days link down below to that why you should drink your moringa instead of eating it also he has other things like some mulberries that the leaves are edible that are only fruiting one at certain times of the year he also has like a jabba de Cava that the fruits don't ripen up easily and also has a chico sapote that the fruits ripen unevenly so somebody just can't come to the tree and strip all the fruits he also has a mango tree that has green mangoes when they're ripe, which is kind of uncommon, so most people aren't going to pick green mangoes to eat. So yeah, so when you're planting out your yard in a residential area in the front, if you have potential thieves or thing, people that are going to steal your fruit, plant things that either they don't know or things that will deter them like Paul does here. All right, so as you guys can see, we're here in the front yard, and one of his goals for the front yard is to grow things that are shorter in the front of the house and then kind of gradually make them taller as they get closer to the house. This not only will give them privacy, but also allow the trees to get the sun they need uh, to grow. As you can see, he's got basically one mango here and one mango right there. These trees are literally planted eight feet apart. If these were normal sized mango trees, he wouldn't be doing that. Maybe he'd plant them 10 or more feet apart. But these are actually dwarf mango trees, one called a pinkering uh, mango that is actually quite disease resistant and a good dwarf variety to grow. So yeah, he plants things a lot closer than you would, he would normally. And of course, the other thing he does, some of the taller trees in the back, he'll whack off and basically literally cut them in half after the mango season is done, causing them to basically put more growth into the greenery, but also more importantly, keeping his mango trees short so he can harvest them easily and they won't get overgrown. So one of Paul's most productive trees that he has in his yard is the star fruit tree. The reason why it's the most productive is because unlike other tropical trees like the mangoes for example that produce one time of year one crop, this tree can produce multiple times a year, three to four times a year. Paul says it almost always has star fruits on it. That being said I do have a video um, that I share with you guys how you guys could force a star fruit tree to fruit. Actually, if I remember properly, you're gonna take a branch and you're gonna come down and you're basically just gonna kind of bend the branch and just kind of kink it just a little bit and you hear a little snap, but you don't wanna break it, right? When you kink it, you're gonna basically break some of the cambium layer and the tree's gonna be like, whoa, I'm stressing out, I'm under attack, I better fruit and reproduce and make seeds, right? 
So you could just go along your whole tree and do that and then force it to uh, flower so that it will make more fruit. Of course, there are many different varieties of star fruit, so I encourage you guys to get a good variety because there's varieties that are sweeter and varieties that are not so sweet. So one of Paul's favorite trees is this tree. This is actually known as the miracle fruit or miracle berry tree. It makes these little berries. Now, the berries don't necessarily taste super sweet or super awesome, but they have a special property to them that when you eat one of the berries and you crush it in your mouth, you coat your tongue with it, it basically makes everything that tastes sour taste sweet. So one of the things Paul do does is he does like intermittent fasting where he'll try to like not eat during large portions of the day and instead he may drink some water with lemon in it and if he puts this on his tongue and then just drinks the lemon water, the lemon water now tastes like lemonade. So this really helps him to remain more compliant with his you know intermittent fasting cycles and increasing the duration than he otherwise would if he didn't have this tree. Also, many cancer patients and other people that are not supposed to eat sweet things can now get some freeze-dried miracle berries from different companies that are on the internet and then basically get the same effect without having to live in the tropics and grow the miracle fruit tree. A matter of fact, the miracle fruit tree is one of my favorite trees and I'm gonna be growing a whole bunch of these myself in my property that I just bought in Puerto Rico. All right, so while Paul focuses on growing many tropical trees that are really easy to grow he does like the challenge of growing some subtropical trees such as the figs i've noticed that he's basically pulling out some of the figs he has planted in the past because they did not perform well for him I and mean, he's probably planting some more mangoes or other tropicals that'll be a lot less work and be more fruitful his latest experiment is growing pomegranates for me pomegranates like just grow like a weed in the desert but for here different story the weather's a lot different for pomegranates so i'm it, curious to see how his pomegranates will do. He says this is a special variety from like Vietnam that's supposed to do really good here in South Florida. Alright so you guys can see I'm standing here and there's basically a nice tall tree. This is known as the Moringa tree and this is one tree I want you guys to plant if you guys live in South Florida or even other places like Zone 9 that you may be able to keep it alive during the summer and it may go dormant in the winter. If you mulch it heavy cut it back. This is the Moringa tree this is basically a vegetable tree versus a fruit tree, although it does also make these drumsticks that are edible with seeds that are also edible that actually I've eaten the seeds, but I've never eaten the drumsticks. Um, I, I would hope that he uses more Moringa and I encourage him like, hey man, you should juice this stuff in your morning juice. But instead he prefers to harvest the leaves, turn it into a powder uh, through dehydration and then he basically he will add it to his smoothie. So you can make your own literally green powder superfoods, of course, I always say freshest is bestest, and I want you guys to harvest your Moringa fresh, add it to salads, add it to blended smoothies, fresh instead of dried, you know, juice it. However you guys get more Moringa into you, I think it is quite beneficial. Another more tree-like shrub, and actually this is a good example of one, this is the Katuk, and actually has a nice caliper, probably that big at the bottom. So normally it's considered a shrub, but at this point, his has been growing here so long, I consider it tree-ish. <laughs> But you guys can see he's got some nice katuk. This is, happens to be the variegated leaf katuk. The variegated leaf katuk is not as cold tolerant as the standard green leaf katuk. Paul gets away with it. It's next to his fence. It looks like it's growing great. But for those of us that are not here in West Palm Beach or more south, I'd encourage you guys to try the green katuk. The green katuk he will use actually in salads, use it in juices and blended smoothies. And I love it because basically you can come to it and just swipe off all the leaves and you could basically just add these to your salad. As a matter of fact, I was at a farm last night and I actually just added these all to the salad last night and they were delicious. Mm. Paul says they taste like peanut butter. I'm going to tell you guys that they have a nice peanutty flavor. Really a lot unique and different than other greens like lettuce that you may be buying. And I encourage you guys to plant some katuk. I would say plant a whole hedge of katuk. I would plant that as a border on the outside of my yard because most people aren't going to know the katuk leaves are edible mm. and also delicious. So one of Paul's favorite fruits as well as mine is the sapodilla. The challenge that he's had with sapodillas is finding one that really grows well for him that fruits and has a good quality fruit. You know Paul's a really finicky fruit eater I'm going to tell you guys like he'll he'll grow something for a couple years and he'll chop it down if it doesn't taste good then he'll replant it and then start the process over. Meanwhile, because he has a hundred trees, he's always having things of fruit. And on the, if you have a hundred trees, you're gonna have a list. This tree's my favorite tree. This tree's my next favorite tree. This tree's my next favorite tree. And at the bottom of the list, that's where he basically plucks out the ones at the bottom, puts in new ones. So maybe these new ones 
will basically be his new favorite trees up at the top of the list, right? And if you have limited space, then, you know, I would say do what Paul's doing. I mean, I do that with vegetables. I grow many vegetables. Some vegetables aren't my favorite. I tend to grow less of those. I grow more of the ones that perform well and that I like a lot. That being said, I encourage you guys also to have a diversity and always try and experiment with new and different varieties of fruits as well as, of course, vegetables so you guys could diversify your diet and also be more resilient. You know, he has a lot of trees planted in mangoes and if some reason there's a mango disease at some point, right, a lot of what he's growing could get wiped out. So for that reason alone, I encourage you guys to diversify your different kinds of plants and plant families and fruits you're growing so that in case um, of something happens, you're more resilient. Of course, the uh, sapodillas or chico sapotes, I call it the brown sugar fruit, is amazing. One of my favorite fruits for sure. They ripen unevenly. So, you know, this one may ripen and that one, but you guys can see this one is quite productive. He has many different varieties of the sapodillas planted around his yard. So as you guys can see, this tree is loaded up with mame sapotes. Actually, I had a mame sapote for breakfast this morning. It was delicious. This is known as the pumpkin pie fruit. You know, there's pretty good production here in Florida in Homestead, and actually there's shippers in Homestead that all ship the mame sapote fruit all over the country. The challenge is sometimes they pick it too early. You buy that fruit, and generally it's around $2.99 or more per pound when I've seen it in stores near me. And sometimes you'll buy it and then it'll never ripen up. Luckily, the ones I bought locally ripened up and they ripened up really good. And they're quite delicious. Pumpkin pie fruit, definitely one of my favorite fruits for sure. And Paul's got, once again, multiple varieties of this fruit. I think that's all about all, about all I got for the front yard. So let's go ahead and head into his backyard and show you guys even more fruit trees. All right, so Paul's got a lot more fruit trees and different kinds of fruit trees, although he's got lots of mangoes and avocados here in the backyard. He's also got other... Uh, fruits as well including the dragon fruit you guys can see it's uh, flowering and fruiting the amazing thing here in South Florida is that you don't have to hand pollinate your dragon fruit like you do in some areas he said he gets him and his neighbor across the street get tons of dragon fruits without even hand pollination which is really cool to me all right guys so the next tree I want to show you guys is actually a jackfruit tree that he planted from seed it was a seedling tree that he didn't know if it was going to do good now he has lots of drag jackfruit seedling trees coming up and he lets them grow up and grow big. And if they're, they grow up and grow big and are quite productive and taste good, he'll keep them. And if they grow up and grow big and are not tasty, then he cuts them down. But hey, I encourage you guys to have more seedlings. Maybe you're going to create new varieties that taste amazing that have some desirable traits that you like. Anyways, this jackfruit tree is a seedling and it's really pumping out the fruit. It's, it has a yellow flesh on inside there. Let me go ahead and take the camera into my hand and show you guys just how loaded up this jackfruit tree is. The jackfruit is probably the largest fruit in the world. It can be up to 100 pounds or maybe even a little bit more than that. And it's super delicious. If you're wondering what jackfruit tastes like, it tastes like juicy fruit bubblegum. So if you ever had juicy fruit bubblegum, has that nice juicy fruit flavor, jackfruit tastes like juicy fruit bubblegum. That's where they got the flavor for juicy fruit from jackfruit, not the other way around. Jackfruit did not get the flavor from juicy fruit gum, guys. So Let's take a look and see how much fruit is on this tree. All right, so walking underneath the canopy, look close, guys. You guys can see a fruit right up there. If we go over here, you guys can see there's a fruit right there. <laughs> if we walk straight ahead, right through the cobwebs, <laughs> we walk straight ahead, you guys can see there's some, there's like two fruits right here, like hanging. If we go down here, there's two fruit, two more fruits, actually three fruits hanging in a little cluster right there. If we look back in the tree, there's two more fruits there. There's one fruit right here to the side. I think that was a fruit that we saw from the front. There's two fruits up there, <laughs> two fruits there. There's two fruits like way over yonder. If I go over here, you guys can see there's like three fruits there, one fruit up there. This tree is loaded with fruits man and this is a seedling so that's the power of seedlings so I encourage you guys you know next time you have some jackfruit seeds or seeds from other fruits hey try to plant them let them grow out and fruit to see what you're gonna get maybe you're gonna get lucky and you're gonna get a productive tree like this and maybe you're not gonna get so lucky and you're gonna end up chopping down the tree but hey give your seeds a chance to grow to see if they're gonna be the next amazing fruit tree you grow. All right, so as you guys can see, we're standing next to an avocado tree, and aside from the mangoes that he has a lot of, that actually I don't even think I showed you that many yet, he has lots of avocado trees. He has like avocados that'll range the whole avocado season, which is not just a month or two. 
it's actually nine months if you plant strategically and plant the different kinds of avocados you could have avocados nine months out of the year except uh, you know the maybe first few months of the year you could be eating avocados that you grew in your own yard Paul also likes to basically dispel the misnomer that like oh man everybody thinks Florida avocados are these watery things right he's telling me John we got Florida avocados that are nice and buttery just like the Haas avocado that everybody is used to <laughs> it's rare that I've tasted one of those myself but I trust Paul he, I mean, he has all these fruit trees with even avocados on them that I just wish I could try to see how rich and fatty they actually are. All right, so you guys can see Paul also has a smaller area for vegetable gardening, including this nice little uh, tri-stack raised bed that actually he made a video on. If I remember, I'll post that down below so you guys can see how he built it and how he planted it out and grew some vegetables in there in the winter season. That being said, like many Florida gardeners, in my opinion unfortunately he takes the summers off because he believes that the summers are just too hot to grow vegetables and also more importantly he's too busy with his fruit trees harvesting fresh fruit every day he ain't got the time for vegetables vegetables are a winter crop for him here in South Florida but I encourage you guys to make vegetables part of your summer growing as well right fruits and vegetables are the healthiest foods on the planet and if I had to say one's more healthy than the other I would say vegetables especially the leafy green vegetables are more valuable so I encourage Paul as well as you guys to find the vegetables that yes you can grow in the summer times here in South Florida including things like eggplant and okra and Egyptian spinach Malabar spinach um, there's so many different green vegetables that you guys can grow in the summertime and the fact of the matter is unfortunately most people don't so Paul is growing some vegetables he has these basically concrete block raised beds some of them have some weeds in there that I would definitely have to do a lot of weeding in these beds because for me vegetables are my priority and fruit is secondary for me personally when I'm gardening in my garden based on my values and what is important to me that being said I highly respect Paul for valuing and taking care of his fruit trees the fruit trees are his babies and definitely provide him more calories than he's getting from his leafy greens and the vegetables that he's growing that being said there's no reason for your raised beds to basically um, collect a lot of weeds and go fallow you know I would encourage you to plant the greens that will grow and of course he has some collard greens here and look at these collard greens guys these leaves are incredible for many reasons of course he does make humanure I have covered that in the past link down below to that video where he basically uses his own manure compost it properly and then adds that to his vegetable garden to grow super healthy big greens now the challenge I see with his greens here, his collard greens, which I did harvest yesterday and juiced up a bunch of my juice and I drank them yesterday, I'll be drinking some of these very collards today, is that he has some caterpillars because it looks to me like he doesn't really even go by here too much because surely if I saw caterpillars on my greens, I would stop and basically squish them. <laughs> but he's basically just kind of letting them go. I mean, when I was harvesting my greens, I took care of a couple of them for him, but he's got a few more and they're really not even they're really apparent I mean I could see them right there they're almost like kind of fluorescent colored here in South Florida um, also I want to say that his uh, garden beds are appropriately placed they are over literally his leach field for his septic system you can't plant trees over your leach field but yes putting a raised bed garden that is raised above the soil with roots that are not going to encroach into the septic system I personally would do that and so did Paul so that's the way he's able to basically use this space that is not good for fruit trees for growing vegetables that he mostly grows in the winter season but I hope one of these days he also starts to grow in the summer season as well even like low maintenance crops like you could fill a whole bed with mint for example or basil for example or you know longevity spinach for example and the whole bed could just be taken over with that maybe even go to cola right the whole bed will just be taken over by that and at least he'll have go to cola or Egyptian or you know longevity spinach to harvest every day of the year literally right and with instead of like having all these weeds so at least he's had some more food to to choose from if he wanted to harvest it actually I think he told me he doesn't like the flavor of uh, longevity spinach so maybe he should plant some other kind of CISO spinach or Brazilian spinach or Suriname spinach that would really take over a nice area and provide him greens to eat throughout the summer along with his amazing fruit trees all right the cool thing is that I'm always learning new stuff in this trip I learned that actually white sapotes grown in Florida taste better than the ones that I thought tasted good in California you know I've always I've grown up on the West Coast and have had white sapotes grown in California for you know a lot of my life 
and Paul's like, oh, I'm growing white sapotas, and I'm like thinking in my head, oh, those can't be good, man. The ones in California are better, right? I don't know, I have this like West Coast bias thing going on in my head for some reason. And we're walking around his yard, and he has this great big white sapote tree, and this tree is loaded up. I mean, look at all these little sapotes right now. This is a different variety, and they look a bit different. These are kind of more torpedo shaped and the nice round apple looking sapotes that I get in California. And I was like, oh, those are small and, you know, they're not going to be good. And then he, like, you know, harvest a couple off the ground that are ripe because the tree drops them when they're ripe. And he's like, here, John, eat this. And I'm like, with the skin? He's like, yeah. So I eat it and I'm like, wow, this sapote is actually better than the one that I've had from California that tend to be a little bit more watery. These are actually more sweet. That being said, I did have actually a miracle berry a little bit earlier. So maybe that's making the taste even sweeter than it is. But nonetheless, it was quite amazing. And this tree, guys, is loaded up. So do not underestimate the power of the white sapote, another amazing tree you guys should grow if you live here in South Florida. So another family of trees that Paul likes to grow is the Anona's family of trees. This particularly has to be a soursop. He also has other kind of like relinias and things like that, sugar apples and whatnot. But he really likes the soursop. For me, I like gag on the soursop. Like he'd love to make a full meal out of the soursop for me. Actually, honestly, I'd rather eat the leaves of the soursop, which has been shown in published studies to be like anti-cancer. Meanwhile, he'd rather eat the fruit. Like, I'll give him my fruit. I'm like, just give me your leaves for their, for their health benefits. Like, the soursop is a sweet and sour fruit, and I, and I don't know why, but like, I just gag on it. Maybe it's because it was one time in Hawaii that actually I was eating soursop, maybe with some soybean sprouts or something, and I, and I vomited, right? So maybe that's in my head still, that like these soursops made me vomit, and I'm going to stay away from them. But yeah. Nonetheless, you know, there's so many things you can grow here in South Florida if you adapt to growing some of these more tropical trees and some of the ones that Paul has been successful with. All right, so the last tree I'm going to show you guys on this tour is one of his, you know, many mango trees. He has probably over 30 or 40 different mango varieties and he keeps cutting them down and getting a better one and all these crazy things that he does because he just wants to have the best of the best and the ones he likes the most. But I'm proud to say that actually Paul is growing this particular tree that is loaded with these fruits because of me. You know, many years ago, I, I went to a place called Truly Tropical and I made a video there and then basically I brought up one of these mangoes to him known as a lemon meringue mango. And I'm like, Paul, you gotta try this mango, man. It's like amazing because I've never tasted anything like it before. It has like a nice, like floral kind of like, it's eat, like you're eating flowers, but you're also eating a mango. Like the mangoes in the store that are hot water dipped and imported from Mexico or Ecuador, or wherever they come from, right? They just taste so bland, so plain. But these mangoes actually taste like lemon meringue pie for, I mean, why they call it lemon meringue? Because it has like really nice, intense, rich flavors. So he loves that he has two large trees now, you know, thankfully because of me, that are producing these nice, ripe fruits for him to eat. You know, here's the thing, mango trees produce at different times of the year, right? Some are early, some are mid, and some are late. So he has all different kinds of mangoes, some early, some mid, some late so we could have plenty of mangoes to eat. So I know this video tour was a little bit short today and that's because I didn't have to make a long video because Paul has his own YouTube channel called Fruitful Trees and I could hear the background music or his intro music going on in my head as I say that. I'll put a link down below in the description to his YouTube channel where he goes into detail about all the different fruit trees and telling you guys everything you need to know about different fruit trees you guys could grow in the South Florida area. So subscribe to his channel and follow him so you guys can learn about a lot more about the fruit trees he's growing as well as many other growers and farmers in the area. I do have to thank Paul because you know he's Paul been telling me, John you gotta come down to South Florida man I have so many connections and when you come down I'll line you up with all these places to visit. So actually the reason why I'm at all the places I'm at visiting and making videos about is because of Paul. So yeah, thank Paul in the comments, man. He works hard to make his channel successful and even helping me out, giving me good places to shoot at and film videos here while I'm in South Florida as well. So anyway, let's go ahead inside and let's go ahead and interview Paul and learn more about his Fruitful Trees channel as well as all his fruits <laughs> and trees that he's grown here in South Florida. All right, so I'm now here with Paul Nissen who's the owner of this property, quarter acre, over a hundred fruit trees that you guys saw. He has his own channel, as I mentioned, Fruitful Trees here on YouTube. I encourage you guys to check that channel out because he goes a lot more in depth than I was able to go into today. So Paul, what motivated you basically to turn your uh, home here into a food forest jungle with all these fruit trees? Well, for me, it was my diet. You know, I want to get the highest quality food as possible. And even before I got this land, uh, when I was living in New York, I used to sprout greens and just to grow something. 
And then when I moved to Florida, I had a townhouse, and in a townhouse, you helped me set up a nice yeah, little garden. We were growing basil and, and kale and and uh, collards. And then uh, even there, I had some fruit trees outside, as many possible I could fit in a townhouse with an HOA. <laughs> and then it came to an opportunity, and I was still sprouting. And then it came to an opportunity where I had a, a chance to buy this land, and it was one big shade tree in the middle of the property here. And uh, as soon as I got here, I took down that, and I started to plant trees and learn more about trees and and just try to get enough food throughout the year like what's going to be good even with the mango trees I have they're different seasons I try to just disperse it as much as possible so and then I put the garden beds in and just trying to I would like to get to the point where everything I live off can be off my land and I think each year I get closer to doing that yeah, right on so is it true that you actually could eat some fruit off your property every month of the year at this point? Absolutely it's true. You can't live off of it because there's different fruits in different seasons. So for example in the summer and the fall and the winter is more avocados and in the, maybe the spring and the, in the late in the springtime and summer it's more mangoes. So there's some type of fruit every year on the property always where you can eat something all year and get all the nutrients you need all year. You don't need to buy fruit from the store. Uh, so there's always something here. And then in the summertime in Florida, I mean the wintertime in Florida is when most people plant their greens and their vegetables, which is, to me is really important. And I do think the katuk and, uh, and uh, the moringa and those things are really important uh, to have in the house. And uh, nutritionally, I'm into nutrition. So yeah, but I could always eat something here. Cool. So. For people that want to that live in South Florida and they want to put in some fruit trees, I mean, you've experimented with so many trees, you've cut down trees. What are the top three trees that you recommend people to grow if they want something that's going to grow easy and be quite productive for them? Well, it depends on a person's goals because there's so, such a variety of trees you can grow down here in South Florida. It also depends what part of Florida you're in. Uh, if you're inland, some things might not grow better as if you're uh, close to the coast. So you want to look at what's going to grow best, not just what grows in Florida, but what grows for where you are in Florida. Also, you want to look at, well, what's your goal? Do you want just a snack or do you want a food? And also, how much room do you have? Do you only have room for a dwarf tree or do you want a big tree? I'll tell you the two most common and popular crops from a tree standpoint down here in South Florida are mangoes and avocados. So those grow very, very easy down here. And then from there, you could expand it to, you know, so many different varieties of the different fruits that, since you're living in this, it's almost a subtropical climate. It's not 100% tropical, but it's, it's on the border of tropical and subtro subtropical. You can grow more fruits here than anywhere else in the United States uh, that are from the subtropical, tropical range. Now, you can go up north, you can go to California, grow a bunch of different fruits as well. So I tell people... Even like in upstate New York, in Washington, D.C., oh, I mean, the state of Washington, you grow cherries. You know, you can grow citrus in certain places, maybe in California. In Texas, every state, you can grow something. Absolutely. And uh, so there's no excuse of, well, this is where I live and this is what I can do. You can grow something to the environment you're in pretty much everywhere. Not maybe all year long if there's, you know, middle of a snowstorm or something, but you can grow something everywhere. You know, I, I, and I was thinking... Well, I can get more land somewhere else, now it's not in South Florida, but what would grow there? Like if I move to, let's say, Georgia, I can grow persimmons and figs, you know, California and the Vegas area, you know the things that yeah, grow there. Yeah, UB, so, pomegranate, yeah. Yeah, and then if you really want to get, you know, involved, you can grow some stuff inside. I know people growing fruit trees in their house uh, with LED lights and stuff. <laughs> it was a pretty cool interview I did with the guy. And uh, But here in South Florida... Avocados and mangoes are the main two, and within those, there's so many different varieties of each of those. And then there's more things that are less popular, but I think even better, like uh, star apples and and uh, star fruit grows pretty well out here. So there's just such a great diverse of things. And if you do just do one thing, just like with eating, you probably get sick of it after a while. But if you have a good variety, you never get sick of it. Right on, cool. So I know, you know, one of the amazing things about Paul is that he has his channel, Fruitful Trees. So Paul, why did you start your channel, Fruitful Trees? Well, uh, being fruitful uh, <laughs> is, uh, is uh, so important on so many levels. And uh, so I, I, that's what I did. And I was just making videos uh, just for fun at first. You know, I, I made a video driving my bike and counting how many fruit trees were here. I made a video recently that says, I live in Candyland. 
Because I do. I mean, literally, the only place in the country where you could drive down the street and the majority of the trees have fruit on it. Yeah, like mangoes. Absolutely yeah. Absolutely amazing. And so, you know, at first I just did it, and I was doing some videos, and then it just really started to learn a lot about how to grow these, and that's why I took some things out and I put new things in, and uh, it's it's not work for me it's a joy it's a pleasure and i love learning when i interview people and i go to their house because i want to grow like in my small space it's very unique so i want to see well what tree is going to fit here i know some avocados and and jackfruits you can fit in very skinny spots and they could just grow up but some trees might grow too bushy or too wide and if you have more land you can do that but if you don't have the land and it grows bushy uh. it's not taking too much space so i like to visit people that have mature trees to see how the tree is going to act so I know, like, and I'll take a tree out if I say, oh, that's how it acts. Well, I planted it in that spot. I got to move it or take it out because it's not going to work long term. I don't want to create more work for myself in the future. So uh, I learn when I go and interview people that are doing these things. And I also am able to teach from what I'm learning to the people in the video. And I just love that. And all the mangoes. And I'm so blessed to be friends with the people that own a lot of these uh, nurseries and uh, learning about the old things and the new things and there's so many new things coming out that's really exciting like uh, dwarfing trees and and the different select varieties of certain things and I ask questions from a deep health standpoint mm -hmm. also like I get into the genetically modified stuff I would ask can they ever genetically modify mangoes will they ever do it and just things like this because I want to try to avoid that stuff as much as possible so you know so I learned like that Wow, so yeah, that's like why I started my channel, you know, I was just trying to show people what I'm doing on my property in case, you know, you guys want to duplicate that going back 15 years. And then I just started making videos in my backyard, then I started going places like visiting the compost yard to pick up compost, I'd learn from them, and then I'm like, hey, let's share this on YouTube. So like, same thing with you, man, I go around to different farms and I, I learn stuff and get better, but then at the same time also teach you guys out there so that you guys could like go on the journey with me and like learn with me, right? So it's... It's really cool, really valuable to me to have a YouTube channel because it forces me to learn and become a better teacher. In an, oh, no, and I'm also becoming a better student, actually, and also help helping, helping to educate the world out there. So I would say that for those of you guys that live in South Florida, even just Florida in general, and want to know about fruit trees, right, you got to subscribe to Paul's channel because, like, he goes around and interviews, like, experts. Most of these, some of these experts, like, you can't just go up and walk up to them and ask questions you know, Paul has special access because of his channel and his popularity online. Some of his, some of his, you know, view, uh, videos have over like a hundred thousand views and whatnot. So yeah, I want you guys to check him out. So, um, Paul, what's your favorite video that you made on your channel in the past? On the fruit channel? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, every time I leave somebody's house, I'm like, wow, that was amazing, or you know, because just the things I'm learning. Uh, I don't know, I, I'm, that's a good question, my favorite. I mean, I'm always saying there's, there's favorite videos, but you know, I, I did a video recently about the Indian variety of mangoes, and I did that was a pretty cool one because it just showed different types of mangoes that are grown in different parts of the world. So that was one of what I really liked because I learned a lot from that video, but I've done videos on composting and things like this that really helped. I don't know if I have one favorite, you know, so, but, I just, I'd love them, you know, it, it, look, if, if it's not good enough, if I don't like it, I'm not putting it on my channel, so everyone on there I like, I don't just put a video there and be like, oh, well, I just did it anyway, no, I'll keep it off there, but I love meeting the people when I go to their yards, and I, I, some of them I get to become good friends with, but I just love meeting the people, I love seeing how they're doing it, and for me, I love doing it myself, and applying it, and, and watching it grow, and it's, for me, it connects with nature. When I see, I always say when I see fruit and flowers, I see God. Because it's like his artistry, his amazing work, the way he makes these things work and feed us. And in Genesis 129, the Bible says the fruit is the food for man and the grass is the medicine. And I'm like, wow. Uh, so I'm always up for a challenge. Like I'm definitely going to be rocking the garden more. Uh, and I am. Every year it's more and more that I learn. And like I told you, it, the gardening part of it when I first started is, I'll experiment with certain things and see what works and doesn't. It's the same thing with the fruit trees. So, yeah, just learning, but, you know, I love it all. Wonderful. So what tips would you give, like, the, what's the top tip you would give somebody that's gardening or growing fruit trees in South Florida, man? Because you've, you've been through it all. Again, you got to know where you are in Florida and what grows well there. Not just this grows in Florida. If you're inland, if you're on the coast, 
you got to consider how much space you have because I do high intensity garden which is really close but I know some things are unrealistic like I wouldn't plant a lychee next to a longan tree so just learning those things uh, and being realistic because I went to some people's house and they do that uh, so you know there are certain foods like a little up north in central Florida or even a little north of here that won't grow because they need the tropical weather they don't like any chill, out, chill hours at all it's just the same if somebody was growing something that needs chill hours down here I don't like to see people wasting their time like that so I try to and you know get that message out that this will go great here or there but it depends where you are to depend what tips you know to learn there's more than enough information out there to say these mangoes get this disease or these avocados don't grow here for this reason it's not hidden the information and just to get it out there but I've learned it like avocados for example people think there's two kinds of avocados in the world there's the California house and then there's the water flowery avocados <laughs> And a lot of people think that, and I've learned that, you know, in the past, so Haas was my favorite, that's what I thought, but now, no way, Florida avocados, there are some that are so creamy and amazing that I would pick them over a Haas any day, and, and just learning which ones to want, because some of them are really watery, so when you learn which one they are, and then you can grow that tree, it's absolutely, uh, it's just the greatest joy to know you're getting the absolute best avocado available and it's right here. And I can grow Haas avocados. I did, and you can grow Haas here. Uh, but it's really nice. And I've also interviewed people in other parts of the country that are growing different things. But as for Florida, I keep learning. And, and every time I learn, I just try to share the information with other people. Wonderful, Paul. So if somebody doesn't want to watch all your videos, man, can they hire you to do a consult and come over and you can share your expertise with them? Or how does that work? I mean, my time all? is very limited, but that's the thing. But my heart's very big, so I usually don't like charge people to tell them how to grow stuff or what to do if I have the time I'll just go and do it with joy but if I don't have time then it can be a challenge but I'm always open to answering questions on the internet I love visiting farms and I tell everyone if you have a farm especially in South Florida and you're growing food and you'd like me to come out and film I'd be happy to come out just contact me and I'll I'll come out and I'll video your place and then if you have questions while I'm there, we could talk about those things and I'll give you some suggestions. But if somebody really wants to get started with a garden or something else, you know, like if I have the free time, I'll come there. But if not, I mean, we could always talk about hiring, but... Yeah, you I know a lot of people, yet. you know yeah. a lot of people that will do that for them, you know, like I just was visiting, yeah, you know, Jack and... There are people that, and I have connected people, a lot of people that, like I don't do that, like if somebody wants me to come out and graft mangoes for them, you know, my grafting mango technique is okay, but it's not as good as somebody else I might know. And my time-wise, I don't have time, so I'll say contact this guy or contact that guy, and they'll, they'll be able to help you with what you're looking for. So I, I, you know, I also have people come here and check out my garden, and I, I don't boast. I'm not showing them out of pride. I'm just showing them, say, hey, this is what will work in your size garden, because there are two types of gardens here. There's the small house like mine, and then there's the big farm. So it's like if you got a big farm, you can get away with a lot more seedlings. You get a lot away with a lot more spacing farther apart. But you got to be much more selective when you have a smaller place. And then there's smaller places, like my friend who's not in a high traffic area, and then there's me in a high traffic area with a lot of foot traffic. So I can't plant mangoes right in front of my house. They'll take them all, but you know somebody else might be able to. So you're gonna look at your area and where you're at and all these different things but I love it and I learned so much from my neighbor because he also is into this and we help each other and trade ideas and uh, between that and the internet and knowing people and even yourself I see I've seen when I got started I saw some of your trees that interviews like you would interview people in South Florida even though you didn't live here you just ask these people that live there for a long time what's the best fruit trees to grow here what grows the fastest and what's the most productive now I'm asking you those questions. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> you you've are. been doing it. <laughs> you are. And uh, so I applied a lot of things I saw from those videos, and I've learned myself what affects those things. Because like a lot of them, they, they would just say, well, this grows and this grows. But they never really spoke about the particular area, yeah, the difference between exactly. even here in Homestead or here in Jupiter. There's a big difference. Growing mangoes, somebody might say, well, what's the mango season? Well, here I could tell you when it is, but I know Jupiter, like a half hour north of me, it's like a month behind, a month after me. So just learning things like this. So if you're the type of person that doesn't have that information and you go away that month, now you've messed up, <laughs> you know, So because you went on my information here in the South. So it's really important to get quite specific to your area. And another thing, this is really important to know if you're growing fruit trees anywhere. 
is each tree specific to its own environment, not only its area. So for example, I know a friend that has a tremendous, amazing fruit mango farm, and there's some mangoes that, will, that have definitely gotten a disease called bacterial black spot that he wouldn't even plant them or think of planting them. And here I am a couple of miles away, and me and my neighbor have those same trees that don't have any issues with that same disease. And maybe we just didn't get it yet, but a tree is specific to its own environment. I've seen trees right next to each other in a person's yard, and one tree is thriving and another one isn't. And sometimes you could figure it out, and sometimes you can't. One time somebody told me, well, when those trees were growing, they had little mangles on them, and that tree I took all the mangles off to let the tree grow, and that one I didn't. And even though I missed the mangles out in that year, planted at the same time, look how much bigger this one is now versus that one. So sometimes you know why they're right next to each other and one's doing better than the other. But sometimes they could be right next to each other and one's thriving and one's not. And you just have no idea why. Yeah, and then probably cut out the one that's not doing well and start over. <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> or try to fix it. Fix it or graft it or something, top work it or something. All right, right on, Paul. So if somebody wants to like uh, check out your channel, see your videos, subscribe to your channel, um, how can they do that? Fruitful Trees on Facebook. I mean on YouTube. Uh, at Fruitful Trees. And uh, you can check it out there and uh, contact me through there. And I'm very easy to get in touch with. I am on Facebook and Instagram. And I post videos all the time. Like every other day I try to pump out a video. Wow. And I can't keep up with yeah. you, Paul. And it's working. I mean, it's, it's, it's great. I have so many videos to get out. And I, I don't just travel. I make a lot of videos here in my yard and I give updates. You can see how, when I started, there was not one tree in this yard that's here now when I started. Wow, you cut them all down and replaced yeah. them, huh? There was only one when I moved in and I, placed all, I planted all these. And I've cut some down since then and i got more to cut down. You know, it's uh, this. I'll give you an example. There's a tree right behind me. It's called a Geffner uh, Atamoya. It's a delicious fruit, a wonderful fruit. But as I'm planting my yard, I'm realizing it's in the worst spot. It's right in the middle of my walking path. And every time I'm walking through there, it's like in the way. So part of me is like, I want to get a tree in every spot possible because I want to, you know, every part I want to take benefit of it. But now I'm thinking like the stress level of every time I'm like carrying something or whatever. <laughs> Bam! The tree's right in the way and I'm like, so now I'm highly considering uh, uh, root printing it, digging up and moving it somewhere else. You know, so these are things you learn later on that you didn't think of before. And you know what, I never knew that tree was in the way, but there was another tree here that just died on me. There's only like three trees that I ever had this issue with in all the years that just died. And this one just died. So it opened up this whole spot. So before that spot was open, I didn't even think about this tree because even though I got past this one, it still would have been blocked. But now that that's open and that whole area is beautiful, I'm like, wow, this, this would be beautiful if that was open. So now, you know, some, it's like you play Tetris, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I love Tetris. And it's like, that's how it is. It's always thinking about where to put the pieces and considering how much room you have to grow them and everything else. And how they're going to grow in the future. How they're going to grow in the future. And I, and I just love it. And what trees are smaller. And, and so I just love it. And I think about it all the time. <laughs> I talk to my trees. And I, 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 I look at my trees day and night. And it, it just, this is what I wanted. This is why I got land. I don't like to see people with land and there's just nothing there. This is, this is what it's about. you know. And it's also, it's not just growing trees. I have a high respect for people that, do this for a living like with a farm and stuff because it's not just growing the trees you gotta spray some of the trees you gotta prune the trees you gotta take care of the soil you know a lot of people think planting fruit trees is easy and it is to plant one but to get fruit and be productive is another story it's a lot more work because you gotta uh, take care of the soil you gotta make sure you're pruning it in the right ways to get the most fruit possible and you can spray it not just the soil but spray the leaves I use a this is what people are now going to do, start doing videos on this. I use a moringa leaf extract. And the st studies have shown you get 40% more yield on your fruit trees when you use moringa leaf uh, extract or powder on the soil or extract on the leaves. So I've been spraying these for about two or three months now, all these trees with moringa leaf extract. And I'm looking forward to next year's harvest being 40% more. So it's not just about planting trees and watching them grow. It's about making them being as fruitful as possible. And that's why this is Fruitful Trees. Wonderful, Paul. So yeah, if you want to check out Paul, once again, his links are down below in the description as well as pinned to the first comments. So you guys can check him out. I highly encourage you guys to check him out. I mean, I keep up with his videos and watch some of his videos that he puts on his channel because like they're just interesting to me. And I learn stuff. And as you guys know, many of you guys know, I just bought three acres in Puerto Rico. So I'm definitely going to be watching his channel more to learn about all these tropical trees that I have, you know, not a lot of experience with myself. 
So in any case, if you guys enjoyed this episode, want more videos with Paul in the future, hey, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Also, more importantly, share this with other people in South Florida so that they can learn about how, how Paul is growing over 100 fruit trees on his quarter acre property. Also, make sure you click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss my new upcoming episodes. I'll come in every five to seven days. You never know show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. I have a few more videos to come out still that I filmed here in South Florida this trip. Make sure you click the little bell to get notified as many videos come out. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 1,700 episodes at this time on the channel dedicated to teach you guys all about how to grow your own fruits and vegetables. I'll put links down below in the description as well as videos I made at Paul's place in the past so you guys can see some of the transformation this amazing place has gone through. So with that, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep on growing.